Hello everyone! Have you ever wondered how to make a 3D ribbon in After Effects? If you're curious to know how you can make such a ribbon for your transition and motion graphics project, stick with me until the end because I have a hunch you won't find such a tutorial elsewhere. Not to mention that at the end of this video I'll teach you how you can give a gradient color to your ribbon and make your work even better. But before, don't forget to like, subscribe, drop a comment and share this video with your friends so we can all learn and grow together. And if you're interested in learning motion graphics and after effects fundamentally and step by step, definitely check out my Motion Hero Masterclass. Alright, without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. The first thing that I need to do is create a composition. I name it 3D Ribbon. The width of the comb is 1920. I double it so we have a white comb. I set its duration to 7 seconds and its background color to gray. I hide the ribbon combs I had made before. And I put the 3D Ribbon comb into the main comb. I select it and add the CC cylinder effect to it. After that, I open the 3D ribbon comp and I create a stroke like that. I disable its fill and set its stroke to 80. And I set its color to white. Now upon looking at the main comp, you can see the stroke has bent like this. That's because of the CC cylinder effect. I select the 3D ribbon comp and I want to decrease the radius of this cylinder. So I set the radius to 50. Under shading, I set the diffuse to 100. And I set the ambient to 65 so the shadows of the stroke wouldn't be that much. Then I head over to the 3D ribbon comp and duplicate the stroke layer and I move it above the first one. I have to move it up just right so these two layers would align seamlessly. To do that easier, I click on this like here at the main comp, and I head back to the ribbon comp and select the layer, and by hitting the up and down arrow keys, I perfectly align it. Looks good. I duplicate this layer once more. I move it up. Well, it's good. Isolate these two layers, I hit Ctrl D and move them up. Ok, after that I head over to the main comp. To fix the upper and lower part of the cylinder, I select the first stroke and create a point right here. Then move the other point down below and I curve it like this. Then I head over to the rotation of the effects and change the Y rotation a little bit so the start and the end of the ribbon will look better. Looks good to me. I head back to the ribbon comp. I create a point for the last stroke here and move the other points up. Now let's animate the ribbon. To do that I use the trim path modifier. I create a keyframe for its start and end at the beginning of the timeline. I set both to 0. Then I move 20 frames forward and set both of them to 100. Four frames back and I move the first keyframe of the start to there. Such an animation would be made for the stroke. After that I copy these keyframes and I select the second stroke and on frame 20, I paste the keyframes. I hit you to see the keyframes better. Let me hide the other layers so I can see how the animation looks. It's good so far. I select the next stroke and right here, I paste the trim path keyframes. I come here and paste the keyframes for the next layer. Again I come here and paste the keyframes for the last layer so the overall animation looks like this. I 
I head back to the main comb to see how it looks so far. Let me make the ribbon comb solo so we can see it better. As you can see it plays perfectly without any issues and it's working correctly. After that we can control the animation of the comb using the time remap. I hit alt ctrl t so the time remap would be enabled for the comb. I go to where the animation of the comb ends which is exactly here. I create a second keyframe and delete the last keyframe. I make these two easy ins and I put the second keyframe on the second two. Let's check out the animation. After that to add a stroke to the ribbon, under the first layer, I select shape 1 and trim path and put them in a group. I duplicate it and put it below and change its color to black. And set the stroke size to 85. And to see the stroke at the beginning of the line, I select the second group and under trim path, I change the offset slightly so there is some stroke right here. It's too much, 0.3 looks better. We have to do the same for the other layers so they have a stroke. And so just like the example I made here, if I want to have a tail for it, I can duplicate this first layer. Because I want the tail to be black, I delete the first group. I decrease the stroke and set it to 10. I move the keyframes forward a little bit. I think 10 is a little bit too much. I set it to 3. Then I move it down so it matches the strong of the ribbon. I move the keyframes of the start back a little bit and I move these keyframes forward so we can see the entire tail of the ribbon. Let me disable this. I can do the same for this part. I duplicate this tail and move it up. And then you can customize it however you like. You can keep doing this and create tails for the other layers as well. And to put this character at the center of the ribbon, I just have to duplicate the ribbon comb and put it above the character layer. And set the render of the upper comb to outside and the lower comb to inside so that the ribbon goes around the character and the character is in the middle of it. And for the last point, if you want to change the color of your ribbon to a gradient, you just have to go to the ribbon comp and create a solid that matches the size of the comp. I give it a gradient ramp effect and set the location of the colors. Let me copy this color and paste it here. The starting color would be green and the end color would be yellow. Like this. I want the ribbon to have this gradient as its color. To do that, I open its position. I hit U for the first stroke. In the beginning, I create a keyframe for the position of the gradient solid and move it back out of the scene. Where the first part of the stroke appears, I move the gradient solid right here after the stroke. And where the beginning of the stroke goes out of the scene, I move the gradient right here. Let me hide the layer. And where the stroke is out of the scene, I also move the gradient out of the scene. Now let's see if the animation of the gradient layer and the stroke are synced or not. Right here, as you can see, the gradient layer is a little bit behind the stroke. So I move it forward a little bit right here so it wouldn't fall behind in the previous frames. Once the gradient layer has covered the stroke completely, now it's time to alpha map the gradient layer to the stroke, so it would look like this. Now as you can see the stroke has a gradient color. I had already done all of this before to the other layers, and now as you can see this happens to all of the layers. Also, if you want to change the tails of the ribbon, you just have to select the layers of the tails and change their colors to the end color of the ribbon. 
Now if I go back to the main comp, I can see that the color of the ribbon has changed to a gradient one and it looks so much better. Well, you can use this technique for your other motion graphic claims and improve your project's level. Good luck and thanks for watching.